Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bendinil Iba. I am your host. My name is CK, and I today with your co-host to my left is Grace, and we are from Sweat Group. Sweat Group is a training and develop company for corporates and individuals in Malaysia. And being in this line, we actually realized that many companies out there are facing challenges, uh, communicating with and retaining the next generations of employees, basically the millennials. Lah. So uh, in the workplace due to generation gap. So oftentimes, millennials feel like they are the most misunderstood generation. Usually, they don't have space to voice out. Lah. And that's why this Millennial Debunk Program is about being a neutral platform for the millennials to speak up and for the current employer to further understand what the younger generation is thinking about. And today, we have three wonderful guests with us, which I will allow them to introduce themselves. Okay. Yeah. Hello, guys. I'm Anthony. I'm Anthony here. And I graduated last year in November, and I'm currently not working, and I do not have much working experience, but I have interned in a biotech company for nine months. Hi everyone, I'm Cindy here. Yes, I also graduated from last year November, but I'm currently working as a primary school international school uh, teacher, which is teaching science year three and year five. So I have been working for ten months, almost a year. Thank you. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Anis. I am 32 years old and uh, I am currently unemployed and I have no working experience before. Yep. Have you guys been mentioned, uh, been labeled as millennial before? Um, I've never been directly labeled as millennial before, but I have been labeled as millennial before. But uh, there are people who are talk to me and they're like, oh, you guys of this generation, uh, you young people, and usually whatever comes after that would be, you know, all this super long grandmother, grandfather story and a lot of nagging that comes with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. never directly like, oh, you're a millennial. Yeah, that would be the similar case as well for me. I guess maybe because the label millennial is something that the older generation are not really aware of. Like they don't know the word millennial, but they call you, oh, are you young people nowadays, you know? But it's just, we are millennials, so it's kind of fine. I'm, I'm okay with the label, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's, it's how we are currently right now. I feel that uh, people will tend to underestimate our own ability because they feel that uh, we cannot take the harsh thing, we cannot take things under pressure. So they label us as such way. And Singy, just because just now Singy mentioned about you feel like um, we are not going to our full potential and people has been looking under and underestimate us, right? I do. You, can you expand on that? Like, well, I I'm not offended by it, but I just feel that uh, they are partly true because we have been bringing up in a very well financially quite well environment. Mm-hmm, yes, mm-hmm. our parents have been through more than us, so they wouldn't want us to be through what they have been through, which mm-hmm. is why it was the best thing, and we always look at the positive side of it. Yeah, so we, we are treated as precious as gold at home, but in reality, it's not because our parents wouldn't want us to see the the, the harsh part of it. Yeah, so when it comes to reality, we might feel that, oh, that is beyond what we are expecting mm, and mm. People will, yeah you can't really handle the pressure but in the end we are just a bit shocked and surprised that mm-hmm. uh, things like that yeah so in a way we are actually you are asking also for understanding la, that mm. you just label us as the weak tofu <laughs> but for an understanding that you know we may be in a shock but it's part of the process of learning la. Correct, correct. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would agree with you because the condition of living now as compared to our um, the older generation, obviously it's more comfortable and they're yeah. more pampered. So I would understand why people label us like that. But people of different generations, we face different kinds of problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we are not resilient, we're not willing to work hard. 
Yeah. It's just that we just hope that they are more understanding towards um our circumstances as well. Mm, mm, mm. And maybe like don't be shocked if we are shocked, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess from what um Sini and Denise mentioned is that we need to work on the information gap between generations. I think mm-hmm. that's what we are trying to achieve. Mm. You know, because different generations have different circumstances. Trying to achieve the understanding between mm. different generations and different people uh, is just a matter of opening our hearts and mind because mm. Mm. when it comes down to individuals uh, most of us do want to work hard and be good and better at what we do yeah mm. that's what mm. i think mm. Mm. thank you thank you yeah but i also like the part when you say that it's not a different problem uh, i think like every generation of people face some sort of an information gap uh, but i think like the situation and the time or you say era is different so situations mm. around us are different our family backgrounds are different the focus is also different like when mm. i said the problems that we face every mm. day like dif- between different generations are not that different but maybe the focus kind of shift a little bit differently in a sense that the generation the millennials are are more concerned about their personal development about their mm. mental health they're not money minded as much as our parents generation mm-hmm. like our parents yeah. they are more concerned about money about right, you know right. having a decent and a financially stable life right. unlike us the millennials i guess the problems is not that much of a difference but i guess the focus yeah. has shifted a little bit yeah, yeah that's what yeah. i think i think like the focus the needs are different as well right yeah yeah most yeah. probably is yeah do you have this feeling of welcome And how has your colleague has made you feel welcome in your workplace? Okay, the feeling that I entered this organization is very welcoming. Yeah, to be honest, I am overwhelmed with how friendly and how welcoming they were. Because when I entered, I just finished my semester. I I have not get my official certificate. So when I introduced to them, I told them that. I just graduated and I'm fresh out of the oven. So when when they heard of it, they feel like, oh yeah, so it's a really fresh bread. Like, yeah, so please treat me well, and I know that I have a lot of things to learn, but please guide me all throughout the way. So the one thing that I really very grateful about this environment is the colleague that is always there for me because I am working in an education line. People always see education line in a very good way like oh you know you are friendly you are kind you are treating mm-hmm. kids you are the life of the someone's life you know it it, it is just like wow you, you say until i am so exaggerated <laughs> with someone but yeah but that's how people always tell us uh, see teachers and people in the education line is but mm-hmm. in fact the reality is we were impacted by a lot of pressure that when expectation comes in as well but mm-hmm. Uh, because I am totally new and I'm not from the education background, so mm-hmm. there are a lot of things I start from scratch. Yes, so the fact that the colleague over here has been very supportive because they know I know nothing. <laughs> I'm just here because of my passion, but they are here for me. Mm. Sounds like a very friendly and very uh, accepting environment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say mine is similar to a uh, when I first went there. Um, I was actually quite worried because although I study biotech and I will be in a biotech company, mm-hmm. but I was going to be placed in a department which is not relevant to my studies at all. Mm. So I was going to be worried like, how am I going to apply my skills? How am I going to contribute to the company? How am I going to help yeah. them? But yeah. they were all really nice, really welcoming. They were willing to teach. And because it, I would say it's a relatively small company, about less than 100 people. So mm-hmm. we are actually like, very close to you know, they are willing to help you and you know, for example, we always sit together during lunch and we just chit chat or we just bump into each other in the pantry or something. We share a lot of stories, a lot of laughter and also a lot of a lot of hardships as well I would say because there is no such thing as no hardship at all. Mm-hmm. So they are very welcoming, they are also very supportive. Like, 
um, they also very understanding that okay, although uh, you do not have any background, they're more than willing to help you. All you have to do is just ask. So Anis, I want to ask you, what's your hmm. expectations on your future works workplace now that you listen to Singis and uh, Denise? Yeah, loving environment, that's for sure. <laughs> A working environment where like I can seek out personal development to do things that can develop me in my career and also mm. in my life as a person. So I think that environment would be the biggest expectation mm. that I have for now. Other than that, of course, mm. supportive mm. and friendly colleagues. I, I got a question. Okay. Oh, you? <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, it's to, to all of you guys because I hear uh, supportive and you know people who are okay with teaching us um but i want to ask to make you feel welcome is it only just people who are supportive and understanding and teaching in work or would you prefer to have that personal relationship with them or are you guys okay with not having personal talk but as long as they are nice in work then you feel okay already for now i don't think so i'm expecting like personal talks just having that healthy and honest relationship with them like you know where we can just like exchange ideas and mm -hmm. they can support me also in a sense that they can tell me whether it's good or not so it's more of like the freedom to to speak out your ideas exchanging ideas and them being able to be honest with it is it uh, i think same yeah same goes to uh what anis has shared because mm -hmm. it's always the first impression that people give to us. So mm -hmm. first impression is not about personal relationship yet. It's more towards how this behavior of the person acts on us. So mm -hmm. as long as the sincerity to really tell us what is right, what is wrong, and it and it is meant for us to be good, then I think that is a good start as a welcoming uh, personal mm -hmm. relationship. Because I would expect in another few months later, Right, yeah, right. so yeah, it will take time, it will take time. Okay, okay. okay. So, for you, you do expect that a uh, person can uh, like, form a friendship into uh, in the... I, in would, the I would expect, because I feel I'm a, I'm an emotional type of person. I'm oh, a person high five. High five. Yeah, which is why yeah. I'm in the education line. <laughs> right, okay. Because, yeah, I'm a people-oriented person. If, I don't find a personal relationship, I might not be able to stay until now. Yeah, I would um, agree with both of us. Like in the beginning, you know, the first impression might not be the same as how people eventually are. You might have mm -hmm. a good first impression and, you know, you might find out eventually mm -hmm. that it's not what they come to And I hope to be able to develop a personal relationship with a few mm -hmm. colleagues. Mm -hmm. You're gonna spend a nine to five job like every like five days a week. You're spending mm. most of your time with them. So I feel that they would be more understanding of mm. what you are going through at your work. Um I'm thinking like so I heard from I heard from Cindy that mm -hmm. if she doesn't build the relationships, she will find it difficult to stay. Um what about Denise and Anis? If you are not able to build personal relationships. Would you still be staying? Uh, I would actually agree with uh, Simina because I feel that like it's important to build a more in-depth relationship because I'm, I'm a very sensitive person. So okay. I feel that if I have someone to relate to me, to be able to support me along the way. Within how long would you expect to be able to build personal relationships? Because he needs it three months you asked about that. Oh yeah, I would expect around that duration as well because I I feel that once I can click with someone, it's very mm. easy for me to develop a personal relationship. But if I don't get along with someone, it's just I don't fight with them. No mm. matter how long it takes, it just won't develop. It won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> so I think three months is enough. Yeah. Look. Um. Looking at what Sini and Denise has men have mentioned, mm. I think it it is it is important to develop a personal relationship with with your colleagues in the workplace because when you understand them not mm. just as a colleague but as a person it, it helps the your relationship with them because you understand yeah. or oh, this is this is why they think 
and act a certain way. Mm. So if like in a in a group or like in a discussion, you could like try to understand and be in their shoes and try yeah. to come up with with a common ground to come up with like a common solution so that that the other person can be satisfied you also can be satisfied as well mm, so mm. i feel like in a nutshell understanding your colleagues as a person as who they are i mm-hmm. i think would uh, help me to build like a better relationship with them in terms of mm-hmm. uh, in the workplace so in terms of the duration part, I guess maybe three months as well. <laughs> but I feel like just like how uh, Dennis have men- has mentioned it as well, I think mm-hmm. I we should not be putting a time period in terms of okay. building a relationship because mm-hmm. if you can vibe with that person, it would just happen instantly, you know. Mm-hmm. And and it doesn't mean that I have to be close to everyone. Mm. You just you have your own boundaries that you have to set up, and yes. and you can vibe with people that you are able to vibe. You know, as long mm-hmm. as you have good relationship and can stay professional. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, because I have some I have some friends that they're okay with not building good relationships. They're okay because they're in it for the money. They're in it for yeah, mo- mostly it's the money and the benefits that you know. So they they are like. I hate my department. I hate everyone around me, but I'm still here. <laughs> so actually, I like I like how Anis put it now because um, like any relationship out there, like friends, couples, and stuff like that, you know, it's just the same as colleague. You can't really boss or really put a time frame. It's just come naturally, lah. Like. But seeing kids, because seeing is new to the industry, the education line, her desire of want to reach out to people and to get help, to get more support from other people is strong. So it's not necessarily three months. It's like maybe below that, maybe more than that, you will never know. Mm-hmm. Okay, how can we make the younger talent like us, uh, millennials, to stay in the company longer? Um, for me to be able to really stay into a company is to find what we really want for ourselves. Uh, mm. For me, I feel that is to find our own standing. By the end of the day, we need to ask ourselves what we are looking for. So, like when I joined this company, uh, this organization, uh, I also faced a lot of dilemma because I wasn't this background, but mm. I still choose to really start from scratch because I feel that this is something that I would want to try for my own sake. I tell myself when I get into this organization, I would not regret by the time I leave this space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's my dream. And it's the place that I would like to know more about it, and I want to learn if this belongs to me. Mm. Yeah. So, like at the end of the day, whether I stay or I leave this organization is definitely uh, not all because of this place, but it's more because I have searched for a better version of myself. Because mm. if I leave, think that this is not what I'm looking for. Yeah. But if I stay, this is definitely the version that I want. But what I'm hearing is like uh, whether you will be able to fulfill the goals that you have personally in your personal life. So I think that if your values, your belief and your goals are aligned with the similar one with the company one, you would say like. <laughs> for me, I would say like a personal relationship is important that uh, it's being comfortable with the working environment is also very important. I want to be able to continue challenging myself to be able to mm. learn new things. Mm. So if a company allows me to different projects so I can fit my my toes into like, you know, different types of water, like mm. different areas, you know, that would be a very nice opportunity as well. Mm. For me, I'm not really much of on, on a monetary pursuit. Mm-hmm. But I want to be able to contribute to the company and at the same time, I want to be like feel appreciated. Not just like, oh, monetary competition will give you bonus, will give you pay for OT, but more mm. of like a personal touch to it. Yeah. So, so Anis, just now I mentioned about how the, how the employees uh, can like make us stay in their company more. I want to ask, how would you, what, what are you looking for in the company? like the ideal company that you want to enter? Have you thought of it? Um, Because when when I apply for a job, I don't really look at the company, but more like the line of the job. 
that I'm oh. applying for to be honest oh. mm-hmm. yeah um, because I guess in a sense that I cannot be too picky in terms of the company but more on the line of the job because I I need that exposure and experience first mm. yeah as long as the company um able to provide me with the necessary career development in that line of job that apply I think that for the first step should be sufficient for me lah yeah mm. yours will be similar with the needs about career development about challenges and increasing your mm. learning over the time. This question, I think referring to Denise, what she mentioned about feeling appreciated with a personal touch. May I ask further what does it mean by a personal touch? How would you want to be appreciated with a personal touch? Um, what is a personal touch to you? Touch. Yeah. For, for me, a personal touch would be like, um, let's say your superior comes and say, oh, I think you did a good job. Uh, you can improve on this and this. More of like a communication kind of appreciation, something you right. show through your body language. And also, mm-hmm. it would be good if the upper management can see how much effort the uh, staff putting into and you know, they just express their gratitude for how mm. the staff are working so hard. It's not like about pay as I mentioned just now, but something like just to show that you appreciate and you value them in your company. So from what I'm picking up, it's more like a communication personal, personally, like let's say verbal affirmation or acknowledgement instead of just like a certificate say, oh, you do a good job and just pass to you. Not, not that kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just prefer a more like a verbal gratitude. Because mm-hmm. then you know it, that person really meant it. What about you guys? What are a personal touch of appreciation to you? If I, I were to further elaborate on what Uh, Dennis has mentioned that having that honest relationship with my mm. colleagues and also with my superiors you know if the job that I've done is not good like please tell me <laughs> like but not in a discouraging way like you know yeah. if mm. I I could have done better like please tell me honestly but uh Like how can I do it? Like because because that is why I'm here. Like that's why I need you, my superior and my colleagues, mm. to like guide me on how I can improve on my ideas, yeah. on my plans. Yeah. So I would feel like appreciated in a sense because like there is a colleague and supervisor that is willing to like point out mm. the things that I could have done better in my work. Yeah. So so I would feel that I am being. Uh, look out for mm. in the workplace, yeah. Wow. So, so to you, honesty is a form of appreciation. Yeah, if it's being communicated right. <laughs> it's of course, like anything, you know, when it comes to when people point out the wrong things about what you did, it's always not nice. But mm-hmm. I, for me, I will try. Although it's weird. Of course, it's going to be very hurtful mm-hmm. to understand that person's point of view. Like, yeah. I want to know why you think that what I did is wrong. I want to be better. It's it can be hurtful at first, but it it goes back to how you react to these kind of things as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I should be willing to open up myself to accepting this kind of feedbacks from other people. Yeah, mm, wow. I I would say I totally agree with Anis there because uh, my superior. My superior, and my bosses actually, he and she did it in very tactfully lah. When he, when they are being honest with me, they they want to point out my mistakes and the things that they they find that I can improve. They did it very tactfully. They set me down and then go through like like what I need. It's hurtful, of course. It's painful. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> the truth is so yeah. pain. But but I, I think. It's because the the reason why they they really sit you down and really go through the thing because they want you to learn. So mm. that feel is a very deep grat- gratitude there, and uh, it helped me to be better in my job as well. You say that uh, you feel appreciated was because you guys feel like you're being looked out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like um, they personally somewhere in their hearts they mm-hmm. do want to see us grow. So mm. I think that in a way depends on your how you judge the situation. I think it would be good for you at the end. Yeah. Mm, mm. Uh, I think most of the points has been hit you straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it's really what just like just like what 
uh, I have mentioned earlier is is our own standing. So if you know yeah. that this is meant for us, uh, somehow the the hurtful feeling will change into the strength. Mm. Yeah, because we, we are hurtful because we care for their words. But actually, when we turn it into strength, we know that this is meant for us, and we will proceed to what this person has been giving us for guidance, and then we mm. will we will improve from there. But is that your personal touch preference? Of yeah, definitely. Yes, definitely. Because it's something that I'm looking for, and mm-hmm. it's something relates to my personal development. Correct. So uh, mm. I would I really appreciate like, those people because they are being honest and they don't sugarcoat, which is why they they want us to be great. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to ask one last question, Nene. What's your advice? If you have an advice, you can. If you don't have, it's fine. What's your advice to the the younger generation that is haven't stepped into the working world yet? What is your advice to them so that they will be prepared for the the world? Um, I would say my advice is because we are dealing with people. Of, sometimes you have to try to view from their perspective and mm-hmm. try to understand why they think that way. You know, mm-hmm. just to rationalize, you know, don't, don't be so quick to judge, but try to understand why is it that they're treating us this way. And also, um, I feel that's also very important to put a lot of hard work into your work, you know, try to push yourself, try to learn new things, gain your experiences. And most importantly would be to um, love yourself. It's, like, it's important that if a company doesn't love you, we need to set it for ourselves. Okay, our goals are not aligned. We mm. are not trying to meet the same end. So mm. you must make the decision to let go. And I think I want to add on. Just now you mentioned about uh, something about asking, knowing more, getting more experience. I would say adding one. Uh, feel feel free to ask. Have the courage to yes, ask. Yes. Have the courage to ask that's what that's you don't understand. Mm. Because most of I noticed that most of the millennials there, I won't say just millennials, not just millennials, I think all the people are afraid of making mistakes, afraid mm. of asking, afraid of uh, taking that step. You know that in your mind, somewhere in your mind, you know that if you ask this question, you get the answer, the problem is solved. But because of the fear of, of like, yeah, I, 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 might, I might hurt this guy, oh yeah, this guy might really different. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe you guys yeah, get I, it. I agree, I agree. Because I feel that by asking, it's only by asking that, that you will get to learn new things, and through that only then you are able to grow and better yourself. Mm. So I agree with you. I think it's also a very important thing that we must all learn how to do. If you're not sure, ask. Don't just jump to conclusions or just do it the way you want. Mm. Uh, I, be, I believe Singy also agree on the term like if you don't know you should ask, right? Because you are the education, right? <laughs> Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, yeah, so if you ask me to give suggestion, like, suddenly I feel that, oh, I'm so old. <laughs> so, <laughs> to be able to give advice to the upcoming generation, it's like, oh no, all right. <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because I'm, yeah, I'm currently teaching these kids, it's 10 years younger than us. Um, I have to say, they are completely a different world from us. What they have is the imagination and the virtual world that they want it to be. But sometimes we find it very difficult to pull back to the reality. Mm, very hard. And then um, the expectation they have is always the nice things, the best things, the fastest thing. So when we talk about the theory behind it, they don't seem to accept. Yeah, they just find it, why not? Because now you see just one click, everything's settled. So they find it like, uh, why not you just tell me the answer just straight away, straight to the point like that? It's really to pause and think what what you are you are and where you are right now. And is it achievable? Is it doable? Can you make it? And if you can, how are you going to do? Yeah, it's how. They always mm-hmm. want the what and the why, but they don't know the how. So if why is it not working, so how can I make this work? Turn it into how the the progress of learning actually comes easier. So what I'm saying right now is like the quality of the question we ask depends <laughs> changes the quality of our life, right? Correct. Yeah, 
correct. Yes, yeah. yes. I think it's very important whether we ask it correctly and then how are we going to ask. Uh, even if we don't know, the question that we ask is also very important because sometimes people don't answer it's not because of the question you keep asking, but it's sometimes the phrase that you use is not tally to what people expect. Yeah, so mm -hmm. if, you want, if you have a question, always think it, how are you going to phrase it in a way that you can find your own answer? How do I do this? Yeah, so mm -hmm. in a way that when people hear, they know that you are sincere and you are there to learn. Instead of mm -hmm. keep asking, what's the answer? Can you tell me why? Uh, see, sharing, by the way, is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I have to say, I always salute the work of a teacher. It's a noble job. <laughs> I, I totally agree with what Sini mentioned because I think uh, she focuses more on the how part, like how mm. okay we do something like uh, to to come up with the solution. I guess for me, um, I'm more I'm more of a why person. We are not um, encouraged or instilled with this feeling of curiosity. For me, the curiosity is something that I pick up ever since I was a little kid. So whatever I do, mm. like, um, would it bring benefit to other people? Like, why am I curious about this? Like, I will try to research about certain things first before I can like plan it out or like talk mm. it out with other people. Because that's the thing, like, because life is not about, you know, everyone just putting the answers on the plate. It's something that you have to figure out and plan it yeah. out for yourself. Yeah. I, I like your input on how to retain the emails or how to make you feel appreciated. Yeah, not, not just monetary, but uh, encouragement and as well as honesty with respect that will help us to develop. And also for the, you know, uh, the younger generation coming up uh, would be don't be afraid to ask, just continue being curious, but also don't stop there. Think of the how on your own, start thinking of the how. I think also because when you start thinking of the how, even when you ask people, people are more willing to help you because they know they are not spoon feeding you. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for your input. It's really, really good. Yeah. And I just want to add on, because of the courage to be here and speak up, right? I believe that we actually are one step closer to wishing, wishing the gap between the generations the yeah. older generations and the younger generations as well. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for those who tune in to watch this video. I, oh, sure. I hope that today sharing are able to shine some light on the millennials about the millennials as well. And with that said, that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.